Chicken soup is an ideal recipe for the pressure cooker because the pressurized pot extracts more flavor out of the skin, meat, and bones than can happen in a traditional pot. Not to mention it reduces the entire cooking down to just 20 minutes. And that means you can make chicken soup on a weeknight. I know, I love this recipe. Really great recipe. So I noticed this pressure cooker is one of those newfangled ones. It doesn't have the little hat that switches back and forth to tell you how the pressure is doing inside. That's right, this is the Fissler. It's our favorite stovetop pressure cooker. Pressure cookers today, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's lots of safety features, so you don't need to worry that pressure is gonna make it explode or right. anything. No more soup on the ceiling. No, totally safe, I promise. I have a tablespoon of vegetable oil heating up over medium heat. I'm adding one onion chopped fine. And if you notice, the one thing we're not doing is browning the chicken, which is what a lot of classic chicken soups do. We're actually gonna get the flavor out of the pressure cooker. You don't need to brown the chicken. We're just gonna cook these onions for about five minutes here. We just want them to soften. So our onions have been cooking for five minutes now. You can see they're starting to get a little bit soft. I'm gonna add three cloves of garlic and a teaspoon of fresh thyme. Super classic for chicken noodle soup, right? Mm-hmm. So just 30 seconds for the garlic. We just want to cook off that harsh raw garlic flavor. Now I have eight cups of water. And I love it when a chicken noodle soup recipe starts with water and chicken. I mean, this is an old fashioned recipe where you get all the flavor from the chicken itself. That's how it's meant to be, right? Okay, and then four carrots, just sliced up two stalks of celery. These are gonna be part of our soup and they're also gonna give some nice flavor to the broth. And an ingredient that's a little bit unusual for chicken noodle soup. Secret ingredient. Yeah, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Except all of you. This is between us and everyone else. <laughs> Two tablespoons of soy sauce. So that soy sauce not only adds a little bit of salt, but it adds some of that important umami, which is a meaty flavor. Right, and I also like it adds a tiny bit of color to the soup, so it gives it that nice golden rich color. All right, and last but not least, we need our chicken. I have a four pound chicken here. I'm just gonna season it up really good, inside and out. Okay, I'm gonna put this into the pressure cooker breast side up. That's gonna protect the more delicate breast meat from the direct heat on the bottom of the pan, and that way everything will cook evenly. I made sure to take out those giblets. You wanna reach into the middle of the chicken and take those out. You don't want them to end up in your soup. So I'm going to add the lid here, and we're going to just squeeze the handle. When that pops out, you know that it's locked. All right, so we're gonna bring it up to pressure, and then how long does it cook under pressure? Only 20 minutes. So it's been a few minutes, mm -hmm. and as you can hear and see, our pot is up to pressure. I can tell it's up to pressure because of this little indicator here. Low pressure, you'll see one little white line. High pressure, you'll see two lines mm -hmm. like that. And most pressure cookers have a very similar technique for determining if you're under high or low pressure. That's right. So we're gonna let this cook for 20 minutes under high pressure. We wanna make sure we see a little bit of steam coming out during that 20 minutes, and we'll adjust the temperature up or down a little bit just to maintain that steady, even pressure throughout the cooking time. So once a pot has come up to pressure, it's very important to adjust the heat under the pot so just a few wisps of steam come out. Because if you leave it over high or medium high heat, you could actually burn the food inside the pot. Our chicken's been under high pressure for 20 minutes, so I'm gonna turn the heat off. And we're gonna do what's called a quick release of the pressure. So all that steam is gonna come out pretty quickly just by pushing this button in halfway. All right, I'm gonna stand back. Yep. You, stand back. you never know the first time where the steam's gonna come out. And it can be a little messy sometimes, so I'm just gonna throw a towel over this just in case it gets a little crazy in here. So I'm gonna just push that button halfway in. And the steam will start to come out. There we go, now we get a quick facial. Nice. Oh, the pressure yeah. is going away. It's going away. Maybe just give it a little shake. This is what they say to do. One more time, see if we can get a little more to come out. Just another little, little Last there. little puff. Okay, so all of that steam has been released. So we'll push the button all the way now and it'll open up for us. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it smells like really good old fashioned chicken noodle soup. It really does. It smells amazing. So now let's get that chicken out of there. That chicken is just fall apart tender. So we'll let the chicken sit until it's cool enough to handle because I want to shred up that meat so I can put it back in the soup. Sounds good. So there are two ways to release the pressure from a pressure cooker, a natural release and a quick release, and they are not interchangeable. A natural release lets the pressure in the pot dissipate slowly so that the food inside can finish cooking at a gentler pace. It's perfect for large roasts because it gives the meat fibers time to unwind and turn tender. On the other hand, a quick release lets the pressure out as quickly as possible to stop the cooking. It's not only faster than the natural release, but it's crucial when cooking delicate ingredients like rice or chicken because it prevents them from overcooking. So it's been a couple of minutes. The chicken is cool enough for me to handle here. I'm gonna get rid of the skin and the bones. And this is so tender, you see the meat just falls right off. And I'm gonna use two forks 
just to shred them into bite-sized pieces like that. While I finish doing this, if you would skim off any grease from the broth. There's just a fine layer of fat here that has risen to the top, so I'll just use this ladle to spoon some of it off. I'll leave just a little, though, because a little's oh, yeah. flavor, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I picked this carcass pretty clean. You picked it very clean. <laughs> That's impressive. It's kind of a fun thing to do. <laughs> when you get in the zone. Yeah, satisfying, <laughs> it's relaxing. Yeah, no chicken left behind on that thing. <laughs> That's right. The broth is coming right up to a boil here. I have four ounces of egg noodles. We do want to do it at the last minute because the noodles will become mushy and bloated if we cook them too long. Yeah, what happens to the leftover soup, if you leave the noodles in it, they kind of blow it up and they absorb every last bit of broth. They really do. Yeah. yeah. So boiling at the last minute is important. And those are only going to take about five minutes to cook. OK, so it's been about five minutes. Our noodles are done. So I'm going to turn off the heat. Smells incredible. Almost dinner time. So I'm going to get that chicken back in the pot. Really hearty, the meat from a whole chicken. I like how you put the cooked chicken back in off the heat, because you need to heat it through, but you don't want to cook it anymore, or else it would turn very dry and mealy. That's right. We got everything perfectly cooked here. We don't want to ruin that at all. So here's a quarter cup of chopped fresh parsley, mm. just to brighten it up there. Oh, there we go. That looks great. Yeah. Let me just give it a quick taste and see if it needs any extra salt and pepper. I want it to be perfect for you. Mm. I think it's just right. So good. So good. All right, I have my bowl waiting. All right. <laughs> you are ready. <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> I just love that smell. Oh, I know. It smells like home. So comforting. Yeah. Ugh. Mm. Oh, it's such a rich flavor. And I love that it just starts with water and a chicken, and you get this amazing broth. It really is incredible. But really, this is more flavor than you could get out of a chicken and some water in a traditional pot. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. Well done. Thank you. For the best chicken noodle soup, use a pressure cooker. Simply saute a few aromatics, add water in a chicken, and let it rip on high pressure for 20 minutes. It's that easy. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, the ultimate recipe for farmhouse chicken noodle soup. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.